on a just monumental day for the Washington Commanders, hiring Adam Peters as their new general manager. Now, I will admit, uh, saying it's a monumental day does feel a bit preemptive on some level. We have no idea how Adam Peters is going to do in this job. Everyone seems to think this guy is the perfect guy for it, that he has the demeanor, he has the scouting acumen, he's got the relationships. Um, He understands, to me, what is the most important thing that a front office person can understand, which is, um, as Scott Pioli put it, like you kind of work for the head coach. Even if the head coach works for you, they have to implement the stuff. And by the way, this is is true on some level um, down chain regardless, right? Like the head coach serves the GM, the, uh, or sorry, the, the GM serves the head coach. The head coach serves the coordinators. Like one thing that I've learned from doing the podcast with Logan is how much say a coordinator has over the actual X's and O's in the football and thus what you need from a roster standpoint. Now, with the modern head coach being what it is, your Shanahan's Kyle, your O'Connell's Kevin, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Sean McVay, Mike McDaniels, uh, on down the list of guys who are combo head coach coordinators that obviously becomes a little bit easier, a little bit more direct uh, in terms of what you're searching for. But ultimately, like players don't play football in a, in like they don't play fantasy football and they don't play Sandlot football. They are playing in highly organized, highly orchestrated structures, aka scheme, aka uh, a system, and if you don't have players whose skill sets fit the system, I don't care what their forty time is. And it's not me being obtuse about like athleticism, but like in some systems, that speed really matters in a way that's different than other systems, and it's dependent on position. And you know, I, I think we've seen it here with the offensive line. This O line was built to run block, and they ran a pass heavy system, and thus they looked really bad when they weren't actually probably as bad if you're running what they run in Atlanta. Um, Caleb McGarry is a great example of this. Um, We used him as an example the other day on the pod. Caleb McGarry was graded as one of the worst right tackles in football a couple years ago, and it was because he was asked to pass block all the time. Dude is a road grader. And so all of a sudden he goes to Atlanta, and Arthur Smith runs the football as much as pretty much anybody, and he's grading in the 90s on PFF every week. Why? Because he's asked to do things he's good at and they limit the times that he has to do things he's bad at and he found a place where that was possible and that his skill set was needed, warranted, and appreciated. And it sounds like Adam Peters understands that in a major way and he's helped do it to serve a coach like Bill Belichick. He's helped do it to serve the coaches that he was with in Denver uh, and surround Peyton Manning uh, with, with what he needed. And obviously he's been a big part of drafting this unbelievable roster in San Francisco that just got named or just had seven AP All Pros named to it. The Washington Commanders have had one in recent memory. His name is Brandon Sheriff, and he ain't here anymore. So that is all very encouraging and good. And when I talk about like Adam Peters is a good hire, there's that. But I think there's actually an even bigger, higher level to this that is obviously very, very significant. And that higher level is the Washington Commanders and Josh Harris got their guy now. Like, he said thorough uh, but rapid, and he got his guy by Friday. And that guy wasn't even willing to interview other places a year ago. He's like, look, if I'm leaving San Francisco, where I got it pretty good, and by the way, the rumors were by the end of the season, like I, I'd said on this show, like I don't think that Adam Peters is going to leave San Francisco. Don't get your hopes up, but it's worth a try. Josh Harris got him by Friday. Done. He was the guy. And whether it was like, I mean, talk about being pointed with who you use, I mean, to evaluate, but also the connections, like to hi, to be, to, for Josh Harris to probably know, hey, Adam Peters is who I want. He's ev- everyone says this is the guy. I need to make sure, but I'm going to get Bob Myers who has a personal relationship with him to help me because I have that kind of network and I can get Bob Myers to come. Like that probably helped a lot. And again, when you're when you're the guy, when you're you are the one that everyone wants in social settings, in work settings, in 
any place where we're talking about supply and demand, if you're the one in demand, you got options. And so while, yes, Harris and the commanders were interviewing Adam Peters, he was also interviewing them. Because if he didn't like what he saw and heard here, he could have gotten any other open job or probably gone into the offices in San Francisco and said, hey, give me a new contract, a new title, and pay me more. That's how coveted this guy is. He could have used the commanders for leverage. He could have gone to other jobs. And he didn't do any of that. Dude interviewed here and was like, I'm good. I want to work for those guys. I want to work for Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails, Magic Johnson. Sick. Sign me up. I'll build it from scratch. Let's go. And the idea that less than a year ago, this team was owned by Daniel M. Snyder, and we spent summers tracking yachts as he was dodging congressional subpoenas, and we spent time having to deal with all of the stuff that he brought onto this organization. And, by the way, 24 years of total, unbelievable incompetence. Like, this dude couldn't get out of his own way if he tried. And that's the same organization. And a year later, less than a year later, he bought the thing in July. We're here in January, and they got Peters? Even if he doesn't turn out, that's already a win. The status of this organization, the the light that it is seen in, we've got proof now. Washington is back. It's going to take time to rebuild it on the field. But from a prestige standpoint, as a crown jewel franchise of the NFL, the fact that they already got Adam Peters, to me, says Washington is back. And that is a testament to all of you listening who are Commanders fans, who, I don't want to say just who stuck by it. Because if you boycotted and helped get Snyder out, or you just didn't care while Dan was here because you knew it was crap, that's fine. You didn't hurt anything. The point is you came back this thing that you cared about, that you have the memories of going with your parents to RFK or even to FedEx. Those memories probably aren't as happy based off the timelines of things. But whatever it is that you showed when we threw the Burgundy and sold party all the way through the preseason, all the way through basically until the team started losing so much that it's like, okay, we'll probably try again next year. But the fact that you made that statement to sell out every single game at FedEx Field this year, which Josh Harris is trying to make a better experience but hasn't been able to do too much yet because, again, he bought the team in July. The fact that there is that much interest, that much history, that much all the good stuff, that this guy comes in, and don't get it twisted, who Josh Harris is is really important too. It's not just that he's not Dan Dan Snyder. It's that he is Josh Harris. And he is incredibly highly thought of in sports circles is really, really encouraging, to say the least. And the idea that, yes, if if our digital department pulls this segment and writes it up and they put the headline, Craig Hoffman declares Washington is back, am I going to get clowned by a bunch of people on Twitter? Probably, because they just went 4-13. and 13. They haven't even done anything about the roster yet because they can't. And we're a long way, presumably, from Adam Peters, even in best-case scenario, building a team that can get, let's say, at least two years, if not longer, from really building what we think this team can be from a football standpoint. But they landed Adam Peters in five days. Don't tell me that almost any other team. The Cowboys could do that. The Giants might be able to do that. Are there others? Sure. Sure. But this team wasn't one of those teams seven months ago. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.